Good evening everyone my name is Malcolm and let's start the class today now in PT there are four total modules speaking writing reading and listening and speaking is the first module in the test so whenever you guys want um, guys would request everyone not to record the class please a request if you want you can take notes thank you very much please feel free to take notes whenever you want to but please don't record the class thank you so much all right so there are a total of five tasks in speaking and speaking is the first module in the test and the total number of tasks in PT are 20 okay there are 20 tasks in total and the test starts with the speaking module is the first module now the total number of questions in speaking are around approximately around 40 sometimes it can be plus minus three or four questions somewhere between 35 to 42 is very common but the yeah, round figure around 40 questions will be there in the speaking test now the first task in the speaking module is also one of the most important tasks in PTE okay so again I'm saying the first task in the speaking module is also one of the most important modules in PTE and the name of the task is read aloud so this is the first task in the speaking module and all the five tasks which we see today will always come in the same sequence so at the end of today's class if you want you can just note down the sequence of the five tasks that will be very helpful if you remember it in the exam now the second thing is try to remember the tasks with their short forms in short read aloud is popularly called RA now the total number of questions which you'll get for this task would be around five or six questions generally people get five or six questions in read aloud that's very common sometimes you can also get one more question like the seventh question but most likely it will be five or six now in principle it's a very simple task there will be a passage on your screen you will get some time to prepare the passage you'll get a time of approximately 35 to 40 seconds after that you'll hear a beep sound in your headset and once you hear the beep sound you have to start speaking whatever you speak after the beep will be recorded as your answer and in short you need to read the passage exactly as it's given in the mic so that's why it's called read aloud now <clears throat> some of you might have taken PT earlier some of you would be taking it for the first time different people have different requirements for the score now the maximum possible score in any module in PT is a score of 90 out of 90 so 90 is equivalent to a band 9 score in IELTS now please remember that the most important module in PT is speaking and it is also the first module it's a pretty short module the entire speaking test you will be able to finish in just 20 minutes approximately it's pretty quick you know it's pretty fast so just be attentive today and follow what I say today in the class try to follow it exactly the way I say it it's a very simple test it's a software based test it's not a human being so if you speak in a certain kind of a way it's very easy to convince the software that you're good at your speaking skills and so many times I've seen you know that people who are not that good at English even those people many many people get a full score of 90 in speaking in PT very easily because it's more about the way we speak it's more about the technique of speaking rather than English okay so keep that in mind one last thing I would like to tell all of you that if you want 90 out of 90 in your first attempt try to be extremely confident with your speaking skills you know so especially when the test starts don't be nervous if you are really confident if you have confidence in your voice when you're speaking that's a really good thing and the software appreciates that factor in your voice if you are nervous you know if your voice is nervous if you're a bit shaky trembling with fear something like that because many people have a 
fear for the exams then unfortunately the score will be a low score so you don't have to shout you don't have to speak too fast but speak with like utmost confidence if you have good confidence level automatically you will get a very very high score okay hope it's clear now the first task is called read aloud and in this task you will be given marks in two modules at the same time speaking and reading because you will read the passage and only after you read it you will be able to speak it and that is the reason such tasks are called integrated tasks integrated means you get marks in two things at the same time speaking and reading and out of 90 points this task will easily be contribute approximately around 20 points in both speaking and reading scores you know so five questions or six questions of read aloud will give you around 20 marks out of 90 in both speaking and reading and that's why you have to be good at this task you have to be very confident when you speak one more thing when you book your exam please write it down you will be asked a question at the time of the booking and the question will be which language do you speak whenever you book your exam you will be asked this question which language do you speak please select your mother tongue so if you're from japan you can select japanese if you're from sri lanka you can select sinhalese so on and so forth okay just select your mother tongue don't select english just be careful about this selection all other questions at the time of the booking are pretty easy you can just um, select them appropriately now let me show you guys a passage <clears throat> i would want all of you to unmute your mic and participate but yes if there is a lot of disturbance in your background so if there is a child in your background, if there is a lot of noise in the background, then please keep your mic muted. Please don't disturb others. But yes, if there is no disturbance in your background, please feel free to unmute your mic and participate. Now, as you can see, this is a passage and there is a timer of around 35 seconds. This time is given so that we can prepare. When this timer will hit zero, you will hear a beep sound in your headset. It will be a loud beep sound. And after you hear the beep, a blue bar will start moving in this space. It's a blue recording bar. So please remember, as soon as you hear the beep sound, you must start speaking immediately. Don't waste time. If you don't start immediately, your score might go down a bit. Okay. So there's a beep sound and then the blue bar starts. As soon as the blue bar starts, we have to start speaking immediately. Now, before the beep, we get approximately 35 seconds. And after the beep, we again get the same time, around 35 seconds. So right now, the blue bar is in the middle. So that's around 18 seconds approximately. Now, please remember the rule in PT that in every single speaking answer, as soon as you are done, which means as soon as this word is spoken provides, you have to click the next button immediately. For example, if I finish the passage in approximately 15 seconds and the blue bar is somewhere over here, I have to click next immediately. Okay. We must not wait for the blue bar to reach the end. We have to click next immediately. Is it clear guys what I'm saying? Everybody? One more thing yes. for those of you who will take PT for the first time, just to let all of you know that in every single question in the test, when you click on the next button, you will be asked, are you sure? And there are two options, yes and no. So you have to click yes immediately after you click the next button. So please don't waste your time in thinking. You have to click next, yes, immediately back to back. Okay. I hope it's clear. Now, what is this word? Can somebody tell me? Personality. I'm asking everybody, so everybody can feel free to participate. What is this word? Versatility. Versatility. Yeah. That's right, versatility. And what is this word over here? Creature. 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 Um, creature? creature. Yeah, th this word should be pronounced as creature. Huh? Not creature, but creature. Oh, creature. Okay. Creature. Yeah, creature. That's correct. Um, 
one more suggestion to all my friends who are from the indian subcontinent like india pakistan sri lanka nepal if there are any uh, people from there today um see whenever you have the letter r in a word you know like c r e a t u r e at the end of the word don't stress too much on the r sound just make it a bit silent so just say creature don't say creature creature similarly this word will be comforts not comforts right is it clear what i'm saying guys so don't stress too much on the r sound otherwise your pronunciation score might go down okay what is the name of this writer dani nenji dani what did i say if the r is at the sound try to keep it silent so how will you pronounce dani dancing dani dancing go Danziger. Yeah, like G A, you know, Danziger. Don't stress too much on the R sound. Okay. What is this word over here? Quick, quick. Uh, aristocratic. Yeah, aristocratic. Or aristocrat. Hmm. It's a simple word. Just it's a long word, so you can break it up in two parts. Aristocratic. Okay. What is the next word? Acrobic. Hmm. Speak Acrobic. it correctly. Read it correctly. What is this Acrobic. word? Acrobic. Are. Oh, A is. It's A C E R. Acerbic. Yeah, it's acerbic. 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 Ah, huh? not acerbic. acrobic. Acerbic. Hmm. What is the name of the director? <coughs> Philip de Montebello. Yeah. Mm. And what is this word over here? Philanthropist. Again, I'm asking, what is this word? Philanthropist. Correct. Philanthropist. What I'm, what I was mainly trying to listen when all of you were saying, you know, how you guys end the word, and the word very clearly ends with s. S. So when you say it, it should be heard very clearly, right? Philanthropists, like that. Because please remember, a simple. but you have a very practical rule for all software based exams and that rule is that if you want the software to understand what you are saying the sounds at the end of every word should be very clear if the sounds at the end of the words are not heard the score unfortunately will be a bit low Does it make sense what I'm saying, guys? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Just give me a second, please. Okay, thanks for waiting, everyone. Now, what I'll do um, very quickly, I'll just mention the major mistakes which people make in this task. And if you guys want, you guys can also note down those main mistakes. See, the most common mistake which many people make is the mistake of singular and plural sounds. So, singular means one, plural means more than one. So, plural sounds generally end with the letter s, right? So just be very careful that if a word is plural then you have to speak it very clearly the s sound as the at the end must be heard very clearly otherwise it's going to be a problem okay the other very common mistake is called the mistake of omission omission means you miss a word by mistake and most commonly people omit articles what are articles Uh, um. Yeah, a and the. There are three articles in English, so if you see this word, try to speak it very clearly without rushing. Okay, it should be heard. Number three, another very common mistake is the opposite of omission. What is the opposite of omission? Addition. Addition. Yeah, addition. Adding extra words in the script. 
So if you don't see any extra word, don't say it. Just be relaxed. Focus more on accuracy and correct pronunciation. Number four is a con thing called contractions. Contractions are words which we get when we join two words together. For example, it plus is. What is it plus is? It's. Right? So if you see the word it's, you should pronounce it as it's not it is. What is this word? What is this you. word? You. You have. You have. You. It's only one word, right? Yeah. So we should pronounce it yeah. as you've, not you have, yeah. but you've. So if you say this word, you will pronounce it as you'll, not you will, but you'll. So try to say such words yeah. a bit, yeah, a bit faster. Try to say such words. So this word will be your, not you are. Okay. So these words are called contractions. Just be very clear with the pronunciation. Another very important thing is that you have to speak at, speak at the correct speed. It should not be too slow and it should never be too fast. It should be a good speed, which the software will understand. The next thing is you have to take the right pauses. If you take a lot of pauses, again, the score goes down. If you don't take the correct pauses, again, the score goes down. So speed and pauses are very important. The next thing which I already said once before, you have to be very confident when you speak. The confidence in your voice plays a key role in getting a very high score as per the software works or workings. Another thing, before the beep sound, how much time will you get approximately? 35 seconds. Around 35 seconds. Now the reason PT gives us this time is mainly for preparation. And in this time I would highly recommend that practice by speaking aloud. Don't practice in your mind. Practice by actually speaking aloud. Because in the, in the actual test, everybody around you will be speaking at the same time. And from my observation, I've seen that people from, especially from India are too loud in the exam, you know, <laughs> so even I'm from India, but literally the shout, not everybody, but sometimes. So try to practice by speaking aloud, because if you practice in your, like in your mind, you might not be able to focus that well, you know, that's the only reason. So I think I've written all of the mo major mistakes. Now what I'll do, I'll give an example, two examples of how we should actually read aloud in the real exam if we want a full score. So in the time before the beep, as you can see, we have 35 seconds. We must read the passage quickly, for example, like this. Most words have experienced several changes in meaning throughout their history so that it is impossible to say which stage in their meaning is the true meaning. And if we attempt to go back to the beginning, we find it is impossible for the origins of many words are difficult to trace back. So still we have around 10 seconds left in which we can see the difficult words again. Now I will start at zero. Just observe the way I, in which I speak. Okay. Most words have experienced several changes in meaning throughout their history so that it is impossible to say which stage in their meaning is the true meaning. And if we attempt to go back to the beginning, we find it is impossible for the origins of many words are difficult to trace back. How much time did I take approximately? Half time. And immediately as soon as you finish, what should you do? You must click next. So this speed is the ideal speed. It is not slow. It is not fast. You know, it's not that I'm going to catch a train and I'm missing a train. You like many people speak too fast, which is a very foolish and very stupid thing to do. There is no need to speak too fast in the exam. Now, please understand. I took a pause at the full stop. Where is the full stop? Meaning. And even at the comma, I took a very small pause. Did you guys observe? I took a very small pause at history. And I took a very small pause at beginning and I took a very small pause at the word impossible. So please remember at every full stop and every comma, you have to take very, very minor pauses. If the pause becomes too long, the score will go down. And 
During the entire exercise, how was my voice? Was I fluctuating my voice or was it very steady? How was it? Steady. Hmm. Yeah. It was very steady. It was very flat. You know, I was speaking like a robot without any emotions. So that's how we should speak in this task by keeping our voice very steady, very monotonous. Mono means one. Tonus means related with the tone. Let me take or let me give one more example. Now, all of you, can you see that in the beginning after so there is a comma? Can all of you see? Yeah. Now, please remember, in this task of read aloud, if a comma is in the beginning of a sentence, you should not take a pause. Okay? okay. If the comma is in the middle or anywhere else, yes, you must take a very small pause. But in the beginning, do not take a pause. Don't. Even at the hyphen, you have to take very small pauses. Hyphen means a dash. So I'll start again. Just observe. So as much as this is a book about the experience of traveling, the contemplation of cities that are vast in scale and villages that are as remote and strange as anything Westerners are ever likely to encounter. It is also a book that tries to describe another kind of journey. Next. Okay. So this is the ideal speed. So this is how we deal with this task. You will get five to six such questions in the beginning of the test. It's a very simple task, but under pressure, it's very easy to make mistakes and mistakes can prove to be very costly in this task. Is there any doubt? Anybody has any question in this task? Please ask me. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? No. Okay. One last thing which I forgot to mention, let me write it down over here. And all of you, please write it in capital letters. If you are taking notes right now, that will be very helpful. Remember what I'm writing now. Is it clear, everyone, what I've written over here? Even if you make a mistake, even if you mispronounce a word, if you miss a word, even if you know that you made a mistake, don't ever correct your mistake. Don't ever repeat a word twice. If you repeat yourself by repeating the word again, then unfortunately, the score goes down very quickly. Is it clear what I'm saying, guys? Yes. So never ever correct your mistake just write it in bold letters in your notebook if you're taking notes right now okay Good question yes please ask how, okay how can i read the abbreviation it's like for example a street in the test maybe appears st i said a street or how can i read street yeah street a street you uh, one second are you talking about this word yeah yeah something like this so it's like yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but my, my but my question is focusing in what is the way to read abbreviations abbreviations oh okay 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 got it okay okay so for example um, let's say this is a word okay so this yes. you will say mr. Kent you don't have to say mr. Kent mr. Kent so whatever you say you have to do as if you do in your day to day life naturally that is what is written in the PT guideline is it clear now so if you see a word like e dot g dot you'll just say example or for example you don't have to say e dot g dot did I answer your question correctly Yes, thanks. All right, thanks. Any other questions anybody has? Any doubts? <sighs> okay, yes, not. Uh, uh, sir, you have said that please select mother tongue while doing the PTA exam. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this so? Um, because PTA has a lot of samples from mm -hmm. people around the world. For example, I'm mm -hmm. from Gujarat in India, for example. So PT uh -huh. already has a lot of samples of people who speak in English from Gujarat. Uh -huh. 
So okay. if I select English as my native language, then the software will think that I have native English as my mother tongue. Maybe I'm from Britain or Australia. That's what the software assumes. Okay. And then obviously my sample will not match with native speakers, right? Yeah. So exactly. that's why if you select our mother tongue, it's a slight advantage in the scoring. That's a simple reason, no other reason. Okay, okay. Sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, one more thing. See, uh, some of you are attending a trial, trial class today, but yeah, most of you have already joined. So see, the main source for practice, there are a lot of free websites, there are a lot of free apps in the market, you know. A lot of free material is there for PT. But I would recommend, do not waste your time and focus only on the sources which I ask you to focus on. So the main source is GD. GD is the Google Drive, which I have already shared with all of you. Now in the Google Drive, there are five main folders. There, are, there is a speaking folder, there is a writing folder, there is a reading folder, there is a listening folder. And the fifth main folder is called prediction files. Okay, It's called prediction files. Now, mainly focus on the fifth folder, which is the, for the prediction files. At the moment, the latest prediction file is for the month of August. And very soon, I will also be releasing the September prediction file, hopefully by this Sunday. Just to let all of you know, 50 to 80 percent of all the total number of questions in the exam are repeated only from the prediction files. OK, 50 to 80, 80 percent of all the questions. That is how accurate this file is most most of the times. So first, try to finish all the questions given in the prediction file. That would be a very smart way to deal with the real exam questions. OK, number one. Number two, after you finish all those questions in the prediction file, then you can actually start with the speaking folder. And in the speaking folder, there are five folders like read aloud and all the five tasks. So the first folder is for read aloud. Now in this folder, we have more than 300 real exam questions. OK. So if you do the prediction file and this, it should be more than enough. And just a fair, I mean, bit of caution, a word of caution to many people who use free websites and free applications on the phone, like a very popular app. Some of you might already know it. It's called APUNI. It's very good. It's very popular. It's free. It's an app and a website both. So please remember, most of these apps are not very accurate with the scoring because these apps also use artificial intelligence and give you a score for your performance. And unfortunately, they are not very accurate as far as voices or sounds from the Indian subcontinent are concerned. You know, they're very accurate for Chinese accents, but not so accurate for Indonesian, Filipino, South American and Indian uh, subcontinental accents. So don't rely too much on these websites. They are very good for practicing, but very inaccurate as per my experience. So if you want, what you can do, you can just record your voice sample for any speaking task whenever you want to, whenever you're practicing. And you can send me your recording directly on WhatsApp. All the students do that. You can also do that to stay in touch with me. So I'll listen to your recording and I'll give you a feedback. OK, maximum at a time, you can send maybe around three answers, three recordings separately. So I will listen. And whenever I get time, as quickly as I can, I'll give you the feedback. OK, so that's the ideal way to move on. So this was task one. Now let's go to task number two. Now, immediately after read aloud, the second task will come. And the second task in speaking is called repeat sentence. <coughs> it's called repeat sentence. And in short, it's called RS. That is a short form, repeat sentence. The number of questions you'll get will be somewhere between 6 to 11, generally. So in repeat sentence, you will listen to a sentence only one time, once. And after the recording ends, you have to repeat it exactly in the same way as it was spoken. That is why it's called repeat sentence. Now in repeat sentence, first you listen and then you speak. 
So again, you get marks in two modules at the same time, speaking and listening. In the first task of read aloud, you get marks in speaking and reading. In repeat sentence, you get marks in speaking and listening. Okay. And out of 90 points, this task will give you a lot of points, maybe somewhere around, again, around 20 points easily in speaking and listening out of 90. So the first two tasks are really important if your target score is a maximum score of eight each or nine each. Because you can see, you'll get marks in three things, speaking, reading, and listening. That's why. Now, I will give some examples of what we have to do. It's a pretty simple task. You will listen to one sentence, only once, and after the audio ends, you have to repeat it exactly the way it was spoken. That's why it's called repeat sentence. Generally, the sentences are short and easy. By short, I mean around 10 words or less than 10 words. But yes, sometimes sentences can be a bit lengthy, like 13 words or 14 words also sometimes. So let's see. I'll give a quick example, a quick demonstration. So as you can see, you can always see how many questions there are left in the speaking module. So right now we are on question number four of 41. So 37 questions remaining. And repeat sentence generally comes around question number six or seven. And before every sentence starts, you will get exactly three seconds. It's like three, two, one, and then you will hear a sentence and then you have to repeat it. For example, just observe what I'm doing, okay? Next week's tutorial on Tuesday has been cancelled. Next week's tutorial on Tuesday has been cancelled. I'm going to attend the briefing for students. I'm going to attend the briefing for students. The chemistry exam results were posted on the website yesterday. The chemistry exam results were posted on the website yesterday. You know, so this is what we have to do. We listen to a sentence and then we repeat it exactly as we hear it. Now, all of you can read the instruction very clearly. You will hear a sentence. Please repeat the sentence exactly as you hear it. You will hear the sentence only once. Now, all of you, if you want, you can just note it down in your book right now that in this task after the sentence ends there is no beep sound okay there is no beep sound after the audio ends and the best time to start the answer is when this blue bar moves so there are two blue bars one is the audio sentence blue bar at the top and at the bottom you have the actual recording blue bar so don't start immediately as soon as the audio ends. You must wait for the lower blue bar to start. And as soon as it moves, you have to give your answer immediately. As soon as you finish your answer, you have to do next. You must not wait for the blue bar to reach the end. And please remember, there is no beep sound in this task. In read aloud, there is a prominent beep sound. In this task, there is no beep. And remember, whether you remember the sentence or whether you forget few words, as soon as the blue bar starts, you also must start speaking. If you don't start speaking in the first three seconds in any task in the speaking module, the mic will stop recording and there will be a penalty. Is it clear what I'm saying, guys? I hope it's clear. Now, what yes. I want, I want all of you to unmute your mic and participate if possible all of you please unmute your mic and participate i have just one suggestion even if you forget a few words in the sentence whatever you remember try to say it correctly okay be very attentive be very confident and try to copy the tone of the speaker again i'm repeating try to copy the tone of the speaker so the speaker speaks with energy like you know hello good morning my name is 
you know something like that so you also try to speak with the same energy and tone try to copy everything i hope all of you are ready i'm going to play the sentence now please try to copy it three two one semester one ends the last week in november very good but all of you will face a penalty you know why because all of you started before <laughs> the blue bar if oh, you yes. start your answer before the blue bar there is a penalty for an early start okay please follow the instructions you follow it guaranteed you get full marks you don't follow you book the test again that is also guaranteed okay <laughs> so please right. be attentive here okay try the next one professor smith will be late for today's lecture professor smith would be late for today's lecture guys still few people are starting it early why are you starting it early <laughs> there will be a penalty start only when you see this blue bar try the next one all of you please participate the circulation desk is located on the ground floor the circulation, the circulation desk, desk is located on the ground floor. floor good good but everybody is not trying please try all of you the circulation desk is located on the ground floor okay next Tutorials are held for 2 hours every Thursday during semester. Tutorials are held for 2 hours in every semester. During semester. Tutorials are held for 2 hours every Thursday during semester. During semester. Okay. Try the next one. All of you please try. You can get to the college by bus, train or car. You can, you can get to the college by bus, train or car. Good, very good. You can get to the college by bus, train or car. Guys, just a suggestion. When you are repeating the sentence, try to speak at the same speed as the speaker and try to speak with the same stress on the words as the speaker is doing. Copy the speed, copy the tone. Try the next one. There is more detail in the table on page 5. There is more detail on the page 5. Okay, good. Good attempt. There is more detail in the table on page 5. Okay, try the next one. Every student in the class passed the exam without trouble. Good, but a bit faster. Speak at the same speed, okay? Every student in the class passed the exam without trouble. Try the next one. <coughs> we will divide the class into three discussion groups. We will divide, we divide the, the class into three discussion groups. We will divide the class into three discussion groups. Okay, try the next one. Some of the references in the essay were old and out of date. Some of the references in the essay were old and out of date. Good, good. Some of the references in the essay were old and out of date. Right. Try to copy the tone, the accent, the speed, everything. Try to copy. Good. Try the next one. Most of the students were not able to attend Professor Green's seminar. Most, Most of the students were not able to attend Professor Green's seminar. Yeah, actually, actually three or four students are performing really well. I think one girl is very good at this task. She's doing everything perfectly. That's good. Um, let's try one more, one last one, then I'll discuss this task. Okay. All of you, try your best in the next one. Don't stop. <clears throat> Always underline the available time in an exam and note any compulsory sections. 
always underline the available time in the exam. Exam. And uh, rest of the. <laughs> Too long, sir. Too lengthy, yeah. Too lengthy. Was very lengthy. Hmm. Always underline the available time in an exam and note any compulsory sections. Yes. Hmm. So see, even this last sentence we did is a real test sentence, and all the earlier sentences are also real exam sentences. So you can understand. Many are short, few will be lengthy and difficult. Now, whether you are good at this task or whether you are bad at this task, you know, if you want a full score or a very high score in speaking and listening, you have to be good at this task. There is no other substitute. You have to be really good at this task if you want a score of eight each in the first attempt. that is the bottom line number 1 number 2 let me quickly explain the scoring criteria in this task now the speaking score which you get in this task depends mainly on your style of speaking by style i mean you need to be very very fluent fluent means what there should be no hesitation no pauses like no wrong pauses there should be no thinking sounds like suddenly you stop and um a uh, no so it should be very smooth mainly that's called fluency number 1 and the listening score depends on the content in your answer now luckily again i'm saying luckily in this task what pt uses is called the partial scoring system it's not overall scoring it is called partial partial means that for example if there are 10 words in a sentence and out of 10 words i say only 5 words correctly and i miss 5 words still i will get some marks you know i will not get zero mm-hmm. out of 10 words even if i say just two words correctly still i will get some marks you know even if i say one word correctly still i will i'll get some marks so that's the advantage in this task so firstly we should not have any fear of this task it's easy but requires a lot of practice the other thing is that for some people this task is really easy because some people have a really good short term memory and for some people it's not that easy because some people don't have a very good short term memory also you know everybody might not be from an english medium background so if you're from a vernacular medium and english is not your first language and again i can understand that this task can be a bit difficult but it's not that difficult there is nothing that practice cannot do you know if you practice it a lot of times you will become an expert anybody can become an expert i'm 100% sure now i'll come i mean quickly discuss the techniques in this task there are only two techniques actually the first very common and very popular so i'm writing over here very popular technique is that when the sentence is playing quickly you can try to note down the initials of the words initials means the first letter of every word very quickly you try to note it down on your sheet so to take notes you will be given a couple of sheets before the test starts and you will be given a pen which is a sketch pen more like a marker pen you know now this technique i would say it is something like you know 50 50 for some people it works really well and for some people it's a disaster it doesn't work like if you note at the same time then your attention will be divided on noting and memorizing you know number 2 it's not that easy to take notes with a sketch pen and many times i have seen that people are not able to understand their own handwriting also you know <laughs> so that also happens in the exam so that's why personally i do not recommend this technique of taking notes that is my personal opinion but as i said some people are very good with noting the initials now what i recommend and what i logically believe honestly i believe that a much better technique obviously is don't take notes number 1 if you don't take notes you can actually try to focus on understanding the audio you know like understanding the phrases in the audio phrases means three or four words which make sense like meaningful parts of a sentence so that's the reason 
I firstly say that don't take notes. Number two, in this task, a skill which is really important is the skill of mimicking. What is the meaning of the word mimic? Copy someone. Mm, to copy exactly, you know, like a copy artist, a mimic artist. And there are three things you have to mimic in this task. S1, S2 and S3. Now S1 means speed. The speed of the sentence you have to copy. So if the speaker is a bit fast, you also have to be a bit fast. Okay. Number two, S2 is the stress on the words. So if the speaker says, it's a beautiful day today. And I say, it's a beautiful day today. <laughs> you know, I mean, the words are same, but the meaning is not the same. You know, I'm not speaking with the same energy. And if I don't speak with the same energy, the same tone, it means that I have not understood the meaning of the sentence. And that's why it's highly recommended that you try to copy the speed and the stress on the words. Okay. Okay. Now, what is S3? Can somebody tell me what is S3? S1 is speed. S2 is stress. What is S3? Exactly same sentence. Okay, sentence agreed, but let's say the sentence is a bit lengthy. There are 20 words in the sentence. Okay, 20 is too long. <laughs> let's say there are 15 words, okay, 15. And I remember the first five words. I remember the last five words, but the five words in the middle, I have forgotten. Now, if I forget words, you know, randomly, I cannot start skipping everything. I mean, I will get some marks. But somehow I want to convince the software that I remember the whole sentence. And what can I do? What can I mimic? What can I mimic? Sound. Hmm. Similar words? No, not similar words, but the sound of the word. For example, just listen to my, my sentence, okay? And then I'll try to mimic it. I will not say the words when I'm repeating it. I'll just mimic the sounds. For example, it's a beautiful day to play the game of cricket today. And now I'll mimic it like this. It's a beautiful day to play the game of cricket today. What did I do? You know, <laughs> the starting few words, I was pretty accurate. In the middle, I ate some words, you know, I just mumbled the sounds. So that is what is called mimicking the sounds. Let me give some more examples so that all of you understand. <coughs> I will just mimic all the sentences. All of you listen to what I'm doing. Always underline the available time in an exam and note any compulsory sections. Always underline the available time in an exam and compulsory sections. First, skim the exam paper, then read it carefully. First, skim the exam paper, then read it carefully. The key to effective study is being organized. The key to effective study is being organized. As a representative of the student council, attendance at all meetings is compulsory. As a uh, the student's council, uh, at all meetings is compulsory. Are you guys able to understand what I'm doing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'm not speaking the full sentence and whenever I'm not sure, I'm just mimicking the sound. I'm not skipping the word and neither am I replacing the word with something else, you know. I'm just mimicking the sounds. So it might sound a bit funny what I'm doing, but guaranteed means guaranteed. If you do this in the exam, still the software will give you a full score. Yes, if you do it in every sentence, you cannot get a full score. But if you like try it three or four times, Believe me, you will get the maximum possible score. And I already said the reason. When you book your exam, what should you select? Your language as your mother tongue. So when you select your language as your mother tongue, the software always gives you a slight benefit of doubt, you know. 
So this that's the reason. This is a much better approach. Instead of replacing and skipping the words, this is what you should do. Does it make sense, everybody, what I said? It does. Yeah. Okay. Now, again, I'm repeating. Purposely, you don't have to do this, okay? Whenever you forget it, yeah, you can just make the sounds. Now, two things I will say. I would request all of you to note it down in your sheet. That will be very helpful when you will practice. <coughs> the best source to practice this task, number one, is the Google Drive. So in the speaking folder, folder number two is repeat sentence. In this folder, I have given approximately 475 real exam repeat sentences. So actually, it's a folder with the audio collection of around 475 real exam sentences. And in a separate answer sheet, I have given the answers also. Now, what you should do every day, at least for one week, just decide a time for yourself every day. You just need 10 minutes. Okay. And in 10 minutes, you have to finish at least how many sentences? 30 to 40. And when you practice these sentences, it should be non-stop practice. So it's not that after every sentence, you will stop and you will check your answer. No, because in the real exam, you can't check even a single answer, right? Obviously, you can't check. So don't rely too much on the answers. Instead, actually try to improve your skill of copying and short term memory improvements, you know. So that is the correct way. So when you start doing it on the first and the second day, yes, you will make a lot of mistakes. You will not feel that great about your own self. But if you do this every day, believe me, in two or three weeks, you will become a master in this task. I have no doubt about that. Anybody can. It's just a thing of practice and a bit of patience. So that is the first thing you can start with. If you do it every day around 40 or 45 sentences in 15 minutes, you have to be quick, you know, you can't do be very slow. You have to be quick when you do this task. In 10 days, you can finish all 475 sentences, which are the most highly repeated sentences. Number one. Number two, there is a channel on YouTube. All of you can note it down. It's a very, very good channel for this task. The name is Career Cows. Okay, this is the name of the channel. It's a very good channel on YouTube and it's free. So these guys, um, they upload a lot of sentences for practice and for, uh, many times those are real exam sentences, many times. So every month they upload one new video. So very soon their video for September uh, would be released, hopefully in this week itself, which will have around 100 to 200 real exam recent sentences. So before your exam, just go through their last two or three videos for repeat sentence. That should be very helpful. Questions or sentences would be repeated definitely from this channel. And uh, the only problem on, I mean, in practicing from this is that the same sentences are there, which are in the real exam, but these are very slow compared to the real exam. And number two, the audio has excellent clarity on this channel you know now in the real exam the sentences even if they are same they come a bit fast and they have some disturbance in the background you know some sometimes some music is playing light music or some it's not very clear sometimes the accents are difficult so just keep these two things in mind when you practice from career cause otherwise it's really good for practicing i really like that channel okay um yeah so that's it any doubts in this task anybody No. no. All right. Again, I'm repeating. If your desired score is a very high score, if you don't want to take PT again and again and again and again, be as accurate as you can be in the first two tasks. If you're really accurate, believe me, you will save yourself a lot of time and money and effort and you will clear and get your desired score in your first attempt. Now, the remaining three tasks are pretty easy tasks. So now I'll be a bit quick. Now task number three, it's a very important task. It's easy, but important at the same time. And it's called describe image. Okay. It's called describe image. 